there are many different types of solar panels, and it can become confusing. In this video, I'll break down several solar cell technologies, like PERC, 16BB, half-cut cells, P-type, N-type, bifacial, HJT, and Topcon. I will also show you how some manufacturers try to mislead you with solar panel efficiency claims. If you're new here, I'm Nick, author of a book about off-grid solar power, with over 2000 reviews. Let's get started. All solar panels are mainly made of silicon, which is essentially purified sand. It's one of the most abundant raw materials on earth, so there's no shortage anytime soon. But melting one kilogram, about 2.2 pounds of silicon, requires 11 kilowatt hours of energy. First up, polycrystalline panels. You can recognize them by the visible crystals. Their efficiency is lower due to how they're made, but they're also the cheapest. These are almost phased out nowadays, but if you're on a tight budget, buying them second hand might be a good deal. Then we have monocrystalline panels. These have rounded cell edges. They're made from a single crystal silicon pulled from a molten bath. They're more efficient than poly panels. To put it simply, if you compare a 100 watt poly panel to a 100 watt mono panel, the poly panel will be physically larger. These two are the basic cell types. Everything else I'll show you is a technology upgrade on the monocrystalline cell. Let's take a look at these new technologies. First, PERC or Passivated Emitter Rear Cell. This adds a reflective layer at the back of the cell to bounce unabsorbed light back in. On the left, you can see a normal cell and on the right, you have the PERC cell. You can see the added layer below the solar cell. PERC now makes up about 80% of all solar panels, so it's nothing new in 2025. Next up, bus bars. Older panels had two thick bus bars. Newer panels use more, but they are smaller. Now you can see 3BB, 9BB or even 16BB. The number reflects the amount of bus bars per cell. More bus bars reduce resistance and shading, improving efficiency. It's important to note that the size of the cell stays the same. Then we have half-cut cells. These are literally cut in half. The reason? Lower current through each half, which reduces resistive losses. If you look at the half-cut solar panel, you will see the panel is basically two panels in one. It's like having two small panels wired in parallel, inside one panel. If the total output of the solar panel is 10 amps, then there are two 5 amp solar panels in parallel. Lower current also means that thinner bus bars can be used, which allows more sunlight to hit the cells. Again, higher efficiency. Some panels are marketed as N-type. Before that, we had P-type. So what's the difference? P-type cells are doped with boron. They've been the industry standard for a long time. Affordable, reliable, but with slightly lower efficiency and higher degradation. N-type cells are doped with phosphorus. They're more efficient, degrade less over time and last longer. They cost a bit more, but are quickly becoming the new standard. Then we have all black Soro panels. They look nice with a black back sheet and black aluminum frame, but they're more expensive due to lower production volumes. Also, black absorbs more heat, which can slightly reduce efficiency. Now, let's talk bifacial panels. These can generate electricity from both sides. You can get them with a clear vinyl back sheet or a glass glass setup. The glass glass setup is more durable but heavier. 
the most common bifacial panels just expose the back of the solar cell. But there's a special kind, HGT, or heterojunction technology. These combine crystalline silicon with thin film layers. It looks like a normal monocrystalline solar cell because you cannot see the thin film layers. The front and back looks identical, unlike your typical bifacial panels. The first layer in the blue is anti-reflective. Then we have the amorphous layer, then a silicon layer, and then we have the crystalline layer. This sandwich is known as the heterojunction. These panels are currently the most efficient commercial grade panels available. Bifacial panels work best in ground mount systems or vertical solar fences, not so much on rooftops where the backside doesn't get much light. Next is TOPCON, or Tunnel Oxide Passivated Contact. It's an upgrade to PERC, adding a thin oxide layer that reduces electron loss and boost efficiency. But these panels are more expensive. As you can see from this image, you can have them both in N-type and P-type solar cells, with the layer at the bottom in yellow. Let's compare cost. A Pymar 450 watt panel with 20.82% efficiency will cost you $157, or about 35 cents per watt. A Canadian Solar 450 watt Topcon panel with 22% efficiency will cost you $200, or 44 cents per watt. That's $50 more for just 1.2% extra efficiency. Let me know if you think that's worth it in the comments. So what do I recommend? For rooftop installs, go with monocrystalline, perk, half-cut and type panels. Their performance is great for the price. For ground bounds or flat roofs, monocrystalline, perk, half-cut and type by facial panels are a better choice. HGT panels aren't common in the US yet, but I expect they'll be available soon. Of course, check what's available locally or online. I will link my recommended panels in the description. Now, let's talk about solar panel efficiency. If you learned something new in the video, please give it a like. Solar panel efficiency can be confusing. There are two types, cell efficiency and module efficiency. Module efficiency is the most used. When a panel is listed at 23% efficiency, it means that under standard test conditions, which is 25 degrees and 1000 watts per square meter of sunlight, one square meter of the panel will produce 230 watts. This includes the frame. Generally, larger panels are more efficient, because there's less space wasted on the solar panel bus bars and the frame. Some brands advertise cell efficiency, instead of module efficiency. For example, this panel lists a 22% cell efficiency on its 100 watt panel but the real module efficiency is just 17.8%. Not very transparent. If you look at this spec sheet, we can see the power rating of the panel on the top, and then we can see the module efficiency decreases once the panel gets smaller. That's normal, because more space is taken up by the bus bars and the frame. So, be skeptical, and look further than the big bold numbers on the sale page. Do you want me to do a video about selecting solar panels? Let me know in the comments. Consider subscribing for more videos like this, and I'll think you will like this one next. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next one.